video is going to be on making the word balloon. So you have to first come up with the best spot to put it on this one. Um, let's see, I'm going to make sure I can see my whole screen. I think I can. Um, but it's obviously going to be over here. And what I'm going to do is get my shape tool. So I want the ellipse tool. And I can go up and put the fill as white and the stroke as black. And I'm going to wait and get the size with um, the slider afterwards. But I can just go in and, oh, not good. So I want it on its own layer. Okay, so I'm going to Command Z. I'm going to make it layer, new layer, call it Word Balloon. And this is a good spot for it. It has to be above the background. So I'm going to draw it now in here. And there we go. Now when I look at this line work, I can see that it is not as strong as I want it, so I'm going to make it larger. That's too large. So I'm going to back off. What you want it to do is match the line work that you have. So when I look at this, uh, this is 10.14. This looks like a pretty good size. So it basically matches that line work. Um, and then I'm going to get the direct select tool. So for the most part, um, Photoshop does not use the selection tools because it's not based on paths, okay? But when you make a shape, you are really making a vector shape that's based on a path. So to manipulate them, you have to go down and use the selection tool or the direct select tool. So the direct select tool works just like in, um, in Illustrator. And you click on this. See the blue selection line? That's not showing up that great because of the background. So I'm going to just turn it off. And I've got it. I'm going to click off and then click on again with the direct select tool, which gives me open lines. I can't even see it, so I'm going to go up and get the pen tool because I need the pen tool to add some points. So I'm going to add some points in here. It's got the little plus sign showed up. There we go. And I want one point for pulling out the tail, and I want one on each side that will help me position this. So now that I've got those extra points added, I'm going to go back to the direct select tool, and I'm going to pull out this middle one like so. Then I'm going to use the handle and I'm going to curve this lower end a little bit and I'm going to hold options so that I can use move one handle at a time and I'm going to curve that inside one. So this is just like you're working with shapes in Illustrator. You can um, go and adjust this if you think that looks better to do something like this but for me right now this is a pretty good shape. Like I said, um, I put one on each side because I don't want to distort the whole shape of the word balloon through this whole quarter of it. That's why putting the points on the sides too. If you wanted them to be sharper, you can even hold option and move this little handle that goes sharper like this. But uh, mm, 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 don't want to do that. But I'm going to go back. I could Command Z. I want it to kind of flow in through here. And that's pretty good. Um, now I'm going to add the lettering on top. So I'm going to click back into my regular um, selection tool and off. I'm going to go and get these other layers on. And I'm going to get my type tool. I want to make sure that I'm on the word balloon or something above it so that the type tool will automatically make its own layer. And I want it to be above there. So I'm going to get the T for type, and it's activating. As soon as I come over here and click, I should get my new layer. Hmm. 
Okay, so what this is doing is it's attaching to the word balloon and manipulating it. And I don't really want that. So I can go back and I really just want one layer. So I'm just going to type my message now and then I'll manipulate it to make it fit the way I want. But if you look, it's put this frame around here. So if you don't want any conforming and you want it to freely um, be its own type, you would lock that word balloon first and don't let it attach to it. So I'm going to try that in a second, but I'm just going to type it. I know I want bigger than 12 point type. I'm going to, in fact, go for like 30 point as a starting point. Um, and I'm going to go for bold. And then I'm going to look for another typeface. I'm going to go up here, start it there, and I'm going to say, what's up? What's, oops, okay, so I'm working with white type, which is not going to be a good thing. So there's the type color. I'm going to pick red for now. And just get rid of that other stuff. Hitting delete. So now I'm back on track. What's up? Exclamation point. Okay, I'm going to get this larger. I can probably go to 48 point, if not even larger. Uh, let's go in here and say 52 point. 52. Enter. So you can type your number in here also. And I want a different typeface. That's pretty boring. So I'm going to go out and look at some different exciting types. I could do some script, but I'm not liking that. So I still have it collect selected, so I can just go and click on some different things. Mm, let's see what this one is. Nope, boring. That's just marker felt. That could be kind of fun. And I'm going to look for, see once I look at one and I think, ah, I think I like that. And it's hard for me to go with another. Let's see what this one is. Nope. So I'm going to go back to, I think, Bauhaus. Yeah, just go with that. Okay, so I can OK this. I can get my selection tool and I can just position it wherever I want it. Now if you look, see how it's got that? It gave me that beginning stuff. I have to get rid of that or it's going to show up and be bad. So let me get that type tool back. And you see it's got the shape of the balloon, which, you know, that can be good if you have something to fit to a shape. It's not what my intent is for this. So I can get rid of those and I can just use it like this. I can add a stroke to this type. So I'm going to get back in my type tool. I'm going to select my type. And I'm going to go to, yeah, let's see here, type. Okay, so I think the best way to do this is to go down to the layer effects. So at the bottom of the layers, there's some effects. And you can do drop shadows, you can do stroke. Okay? So I'm going to put a stroke on this. Um, you have to choose the size. So if you look, there's already a black stroke here, and that would be the size of that. I think I want to go with a blue stroke. So I'm going to go into the colors. I'm going to click here. I could come out here and select a blue or purple. Maybe I'll do purple. So let's get that darker purple. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to go with that. The size is probably fine. If it gets too big, don't like it. So I can size this up some more. Up. Getting into my type tool, going up here and saying let's go with 60. And that I think is good. 
if I get too big, it's going to be pretty obnoxious. Really, I should probably have something else that fits better. Um, so anyway, this is how to do to type. I want to do one more thing. I'm going to turn off this layer, and I'm going to show you that if I lock my word balloon, I can go in and get the type tool and start another layer normal. Okay, so I've got this, it puts in that instant one, but it's only putting in one word or a couple of words. And then I can sit and go back into it. I can select it and type what I want. What's up? Question mark. Um, I can go in when I'm in the type tool. I can click in here at certain places and hold down the option and use my arrows and close up gaps because the spacing is really bad in some spots here. I can just nudge things along with option in the arrows. Okay, so I suggest for this to lock your word balloon before you get your type tool and before you type your lettering so that it um, fits. A two word um, phrase in here I think would look better than going with this in just one line. Um, so there's a few things with it. But I could go in and um, also change the coloring that might look better. So you want to start with something but that doesn't mean you have to hold to it. I could use the same orange that I'm using in the clothing and then OK it and put in my stroke that could be either in purple, which sort of like, but I could also do it in the blue because the blue is going to work a little bit better with the orange than it did with the red and blue and um, orange are complementary colors. Um, yeah, and I could go in and say, well, maybe a darker blue would be better. So I just keep going back to my effects and getting my color and saying, actually, something more like that. Okay, so that's the word balloon and the lettering on top.